Hi, Sophia. I'm sorry I missed our Lent session yesterday. Okay, so we are jumping ahead a bunch of time. We have we ended when we were talking about Moses, uh, God freeing the slaves and using Moses as his as the instrument he uses to do it, right? And they have gone safely through the Red Sea. Now we're jumping ahead in time, so a lot has happened in between. The Israelites had left slavery behind. They'd become their own country. They built a temple to worship God. They've been this thriving culture. But then they're conquered by Babylon, which was kind of a big empire at the time. And they're in exile, which means they had been driven out of Israel. Um, and But they had held on to the belief that, well, Jerusalem won't fall, because Jerusalem was the holy city. That's where the temple was, and that's where they believed that God lived. One of the things that they learn through this is that God doesn't just live in a place. God is everywhere. God is with them even when they are in exile. They had thought of God as being rooted in a particular place. You needed to go to the temple to encounter God. And they're learning in this very hard exile that God meets you wherever you are. But they are also devastated that Jerusalem has fallen and they have just given up hope. And feeling hopeless can feel like death, right? Think about this last year. It's been very hard for all of us, right? We haven't been able to see our friends. We haven't been able to go to school. We haven't been able to see our grandparents and people as much. We, a lot of the people that we love that we want to hug and touch, we haven't been able to. And that makes us feel sad and lonely and isolated and a little bit hopeless. And that can feel like a kind of death. And so this same idea of freedom and of resurrection, which is that God brings life out of death, is what we're going to talk about here. So Ezekiel is a prophet. A prophet is not really someone who tells the future. It was someone, although they could, sometimes they told the future or they had a vision, but usually they're calling the people of God back to God and they're calling them to repent to say, turn away from the wrong things that you're doing, turn away from the sin, turn away from the ways that you're hurting people and you're hurting each other and refocus you know, remember what God wants from you. He wants you to love each other and to love God and that that's how we live full lives. But because it's a, it's a broken world and sad things happen, death comes into our world. And that's always hard for us to deal with. And there's physical death, but there's also kind of just the death of the spirit where we just feel like I just can't go on. And that's, so Ezekiel is dealing with both kinds of death. The fact that a lot of the Israelites have died and also that everybody just feels hopeless, like we're, it's, this, this situation will never get better. So we're in Ezekiel 37. That's going to be probably about two-thirds of the way through your Bible. Like if this is my Bible, this is, Ezekiel is like right here, about two-thirds of the way through. So chapter 37, let me give you a second to find it. And this is called the Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. God is making Ezekiel look at death. And the fact that the bones are very dry means they've been there for a long time. They've been dead for a very long time. And there are a lot of them. And Ezekiel's just taking in the fact that death is so widespread. We kind of know what that's like a little bit from the pandemic, right? Even though we haven't lost anyone that we personally know and love, we've heard a lot of stories of people dying. Ezekiel is having to really look at that in the face by seeing these actual bones where all of the bones are dry, They've been dead a long time. The flesh has rotted off of them. And then God says to him, Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. I love that answer. Ezekiel has to be thinking, well, no, dead bones can't live. But also, I'm talking to God. And God does things that no one else can do. So... I can't say no because of who's asking the question. I can't say yes because I've 
never seen bones come back to life. So Ezekiel just kind of volleys that back. He says, you're the only one who knows, God. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. So notice, Ezekiel is facing this just wild thing, right? He prophesies to the bones. I don't know what he thinks is going to happen. Maybe he's like, I don't know. God said to do it. It's worth a shot. He prophesies to the bones, and he sees the bones come together, and flesh is coming on them, but they don't have breath, so they kind of think they must be they must look kind of like zombies their bodies but they don't have breath in them and then God says now you call in the breath and suddenly these dead dry bones come back to life and God says I am giving you hope you thought you were dead you were dead you had no hope but I am giving you hope and hope is life so this is going to you think that there that nothing can be saved from this. Nothing good is going to happen again. And I am telling you, no. I am, when I breathe my breath into you, and, I, and, and it, the breath is the spirit of God, that when you breathe that breath, you will know. You will be restored. You will go. I will, take, I will take care of you. I will take you back to your land. You will have your own land again. This idea of land is really about having a home, having a place that you belong. You are not always going to be a wanderer. You're not always going to feel like there's no place that you fit in and no place that you belong. You're going to have a place that you belong that is your place. That's really the importance of land when we look at the Old Testament is just this idea of belonging to a place and belonging to a people. And he says, and, and you will know that I'm the one who did it because God is the only one who can do that. There's been a lot of sadness in our world in the last year, hasn't there? One of my best friends, um, his dad is dying, and and I'm going with him. I mean, I have to meet with him to talk with him because he doesn't really want to face that that's the reality. And that's a hard thing for all of us. That's a hard thing to face. And it's sad for me because I love his dad, and I've known his dad a long time. And it's okay to be very sad about death. And it's okay to feel sad and broken and sad for the people that we know are grieving and to be able to grieve ourselves. And at the same time to trust that God, that when we have just given up hope and we just feel like there's just things will never get better, that these bad things are just going to go on forever, that God says... There is always a resurrection spirit. I can always breathe life into dry bones. The things you thought were just, you had to just let them go. It was nothing was ever going to come. God can breathe new life back into those things. Nothing is beyond the resurrection power of God. 
that's one of the important, that's the most important part of Easter. We're going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus as we get closer to Easter, because that's what all of Easter is about, that the resurrection power of Jesus, when Jesus comes back from the dead, is really the resurrection power that infuses the whole world. It's what allows us to believe that we will also be resurrected. But even before Jesus comes, because this the, the Old Testament is before Jesus is born. God is constantly showing people, I'm always bringing life out of death. Death is never the last word. 